Okay, that's fine. That's good. Carmelino's here. She has some things to give to the pantry. Ready? Yes, sir. All right. Good evening, everybody. It is approximately 536. Uh, and this, we are at Laredo College, Fort McIntosh campus. This is the Finance and Audit Committee meeting. I call this meeting to order. Uh, proceed with roll call. Uh, Jorge Delgado, present. Esteban Rangel, absent. Karina Elizondo, present. Tita Cantu Vela. All right. Thank you, ladies. All right, we'll quickly move on to agenda item number three, which is the August 2023 preliminary financial report, Mr. Cesar Vela. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, Dr. Ramirez, uh, Cesar Vela, VP of Finance and Administration for the record. Uh, included uh, with your board package, you should have received a copy of the preliminary August 2023 financial report. This is the first draft as uh, we're uh, preparing to uh, start the audit for uh, fiscal year 2023. Um, so as of August 31st, uh, 2023, the total revenues uh, totaled 68,044,614. Uh, that represents 102.6% of our budgeted revenue. So we over, uh, we uh, exceeded uh, our projections by 1,754,158 um, against state appropriations. We collected 100%, 11.2 million. Uh, for tuition and fees, uh, we actually uh, exceeded our, our projections by 47,909. We were short on the tuition revenue by 1.4, but we, uh, again, uh, our projections exceeded, uh, our collections exceeded the uh, uh, other fees by 1.6 million. So that uh, kind of offset the shortage on the tuition revenue. Um, when it comes to the local taxes, uh, we did uh, fall short, uh, 454,000. Uh, so we only collected 98.9%. Uh, keep in mind that we had uh, projected a 99% collection rate. Uh, we just got a little bit under 98%. Um, uh, again, uh, we fail, uh, the shortfall on that uh, was uh, 537,304 when we look at all the line items that make up the local taxes. As far as, far as other funds. Excuse me. Um, and just on the FYI, on the tuition and fees, remember it's it's the first eight weeks only. So we haven't collected for the full semester. We've only collected for the first eight weeks. So that shortfall will probably be made up in the second eight weeks. So we should then see a difference in the next quarter. Yeah. Right, plus first winter semester. master. And so, yes. So there there's a there's a difference there right now. On the other funds, uh, again, as we had been uh, mentioning in the past meetings, uh, the uh, biggest line item or the biggest increase there was the uh, investment income. Uh, we had budgeted 300,000 uh, investment uh, income came in for the year at 2,690,746. So again, 2.3 million uh, of additional revenue. So again, uh, when we look at the uh, fiscal year, uh, we exceeded our uh, budgeted revenue by 1.7 million. Uh, so the total revenue was 68,044,614. Any questions on the revenues? No? On the expenses, uh, we are currently working on closing out the fiscal year. So we do still have some modifications that will be made as we close out the uh, accounts. Uh, that process again uh, will be ongoing through 
uh, the end of December once we complete the audit. But as of uh, right now, our total expenditures for the year totaled 59 million, 55,185 or 89% of our budget. Uh, again, we are showing right now uh, uh, savings of 5,296,720 for the year. Uh, we do have 1.9 million in encumbrances and these are primarily in the equipment line items. Some of those POs will be rolling over to the new fiscal year. Uh, so again, right now you're showing an encumbrance of 1.9. Most likely that will uh, wind up being as, uh, additional savings for the fiscal year. Uh, one, we do have some a uh, couple of entries that we still need to post. Uh, the major one is uh, um, GASB 68 and GASB 75 uh, allocations for this coming fiscal year. Uh, we have received the information already from TRS. We are waiting for the information from ERS. Uh, but again, right now, as we look at the uh, preliminary report, we are showing 5.2 million, almost 5.3 million in savings for the fiscal year. Three of those, uh, 3 million are coming from the salary line items uh, and 1.4 million are coming from contracted services. Um, uh, under the contracted services line item, we do have some uh, contracts that will be rolling over to the new fiscal year. Uh, and those total about of eight hundred eighty-seven thousand. When we look at the other uh, fund funds uh, for the uh, import export uh, center, uh, the uh, revenues uh, totaled one hundred seventy-five thousand seven hundred nineteen. Uh, that's seventy-one point eight percent. That uh, one hundred and forty-one thousand of the one seventy-five is from the state appropriation. Uh, the expenses totaled 123,981 for the year. Uh, so we do have a net increase to the fund balance of 51,738. Uh, auxiliary services, and this is your uh, student services, your bookstore, uh, and your uh, uh, housing uh, revenue. Uh, the total revenue for the year totaled 1,533,967 or 107.6%. Uh, of our budget. Uh, expenses totaled 1,169,717 or 82% of our budget. Uh, we do have a net change for the year of 364,250 uh, for the auxiliary services uh, fund balances. Uh, restricted funds, these are our federal and state grants. Uh, the total revenue and expenses for those programs total $27,280,485 for the year. Uh, the majority of the revenue and expenses were un under federal funds, uh, and that totaled $22,650,000. Uh, again, um, the majority of that revenue from the federal funds was uh, uh, Title IV or the Pell Grants, uh, which totaled eighteen million. 410,000. Uh, again, we are closing out the uh, fiscal year, so we we are still pending to um, account for some of the uh, expenditures uh, uh, in some of the grants. Uh, and you should be receiving that information as we complete the audit. The uh, facilities master plan phase three, um, the uh, balance for the beginning of the year was 17 million. 498,900. We had interest revenue uh, from the bond proceeds of 588,623. We did make two contributions, 5 million for the MFA program, uh, for the MFA HBAC uh, project, and 953,175 that came from the facilities master plan phase two uh, to do the work at the Ruben Garcia building. So those, uh, the 5.9 million were added to phase three funding. Uh, the expenses for the year totaled 10,476,694 uh, for a net change or decrease uh, to the uh, facilities master plan phase three balance of 3,934,896. So <laughs> the uh, ending balance as of August 31st, 2023 uh, is $13,564,004. Uh, and again, we do have a couple of projects that have started, included uh, including in those projects is the uh, law enforcement renovations and the uh, Lamar Bruni Vergara. 
and the M and O tax collections, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we did not hit our target of ninety nine percent. We actually collected ninety seven point ninety four percent. So out of a tax levy for the year of forty one million eight hundred forty seven thousand seven hundred ninety one, uh, we collected. Uh, I'm sorry, we collected forty one million eight hundred forty seven thousand out of a tax levy of forty two million seven hundred twenty eight thousand. So at the end at the end of the year we uh, are left with a balance of eight hundred eighty one thousand nineteen dollars and sixty six cents, which have now are under the delinquent tax accounts. For the investments, uh, the balance is as of July thirty first, twenty twenty three. We have total investments and deposits of one hundred fourteen million thirty nine thousand three hundred twelve. Uh, Nineteen point six are. Investment pool funds, 3.3 is a U.S. Treasury note that actually matured August 31st, uh, and bank deposits or demand deposits of uh, 90,986,164. As I mentioned, the interest rates have been going up, uh, and they're listed there on the uh, uh, slide. Um, the demand deposits are, are yielding 4.37, or were yielding 4.37 at the end of uh, July, uh, and both investment pools were yielding 5.37 uh, and 5.27%. And last is just an update on the general operating fund balance. Uh, for the year, we began the fund balance with a balance of 5,044,204. The revenue for the year totaled 68,044,614. Uh, current expenditures, uh, 59055185 for a net change of 6856149 uh, And that's uh, the fund addition deletions are the 5 million that went to the uh, HVAC project and the, uh, the, the funds that went to the deferred maintenance uh, funding, which was 1.8 million. So the net change to the general operating fund balance as of... Uh, August 31st is 2,133,280. That's an increase of uh, 2.1 million. We are pending to uh, post the GASB 68 net pension liability entry and the GASB 75 uh, uh, OPEB liability for the year. Um, we are projecting that uh, we will make a transfer to the deferred maintenance of approximately 1.7 for the year. So that will help out with the uh, some of the projects that we we have ongoing uh, for deferred maintenance. Any questions on any of the items? Any questions from members of the committee? No. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Vela. Thank you, Dr. Dominguez. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number four, which is the ratification of purchase of equipment for the Academic Innovation and Technology Center, Mr. Vela. Yes, uh, board members, we are asking that the board uh, ratify the purchase of equipment for the Academic Innovation and, and Technology Center uh, in the amount of $82,938.34. Uh, the purchase is being made from SHIGS, uh, and it is being procured using TIPS contract number 230105. Uh, the uh, equipment is being purchased using uh, funding from the Accelerating Student Success Grant. Uh, the reason that we are asking for ratification is that we did have to put in the purchase because the grant uh, ends uh, September 30th, so the order had to be placed before the grant end, uh, end date. Uh, the equipment that's being purchased includes uh, six clear touch interactive panels. And I believe you've seen one of those is in the in the uh, conference room here at the president's office. Uh, includes also three all-in-one video bars, and this is to create hybrid meeting environments. Uh, includes uh, three uh, Dell uh, PCs, cameras, uh, two Samsung uh, screens, uh, and the accessories uh, for the uh, Wi-Fi and wall mounting of the uh, uh, screens and battery backups also. Uh, again, this is all being funded by the uh, Accelerating Student Success Grant. Any questions on this one? Item? Any questions from members of the committee? All right. No questions. Thank you, Mr. Villa. 
All right, we'll move on to agenda item number five, which is the approval of contract with Records Consultants, Inc., RCI, for college-wide physical fixed asset inventory services. Mr. Rivela. Yes, uh, board members were asking that the board approve a contract in the amount of 89500 with Records Consultants, Inc., uh, also known as RCI, for college-wide fixed asset inventory services. Uh, the services are being procured using by board contract number 625-20. Um, if you remember two years ago, as part of the uh, annual audit, one of the recommendations that the auditors had was that we conduct uh, uh, fixed asset inventories every two years, at least every two years. Uh, two years have passed. We've been uh, working on that uh, one item. Unfortunately, uh, Due to time and staffing uh, issues, we have not been able to complete the audits and the reconciliation process. Uh, what this company offers is that they bring in uh, the personnel. Um, they do work for uh, governmental entities. Uh, I believe that you can find included in your packet on pages uh, five through seven, you have a list of uh, clients uh, some of those clients include Southwest Texas Junior College. They've been doing their inventory since 2009. Uh, they've also done work for University of Texas San Antonio, as well as Spring Independent School District here in Texas. Uh, again, the work that they'll be doing is they'll be conducting uh, fixed asset uh, uh, inventory for both campuses. They will be providing the data uh, uh, electronically. Uh, included in the package is also the use of their software. Uh, we do have our own software that was purchased uh, two years ago. Uh, and uh, so we will be using the data that they will be providing and uploading that information into our software. Uh, also included in the uh, services is the reconciliation process, which is one of the findings that we had in the audit. Uh, so basically, we will be providing our list of all the fixed assets that we have, and they'll be reconciling that information with the data that they collect. Uh, we do anticipate that there will be some uh, challenges during this process again, and this is because uh, uh, the data, uh, again, they'll be collecting data and comparing it to our data. And, uh, and so uh, because we've had some time lapses between audits, we are gonna find discrepancies uh, and so part of that process will be working with this company on reconciling those items and making sure that our system reflects uh, all of the fixed assets correctly. Uh, another part of their service is if we are unable to uh, identify the cost, they can provide the replacement cost information. They do have databases and they're able to uh, provide that information to us. This is gonna be important because uh, as part of the uh, acquisition of the Clark home, we have received uh, donated items that we don't have an actual cost for. So th they will be able to assist us with the assign assignment of a replacement cost for those items. Um, also on the packet, um, uh, you'll see a timeline. Um, so uh, right now that timeline may change. Uh, right now as, as we work on getting approval for the contract and working out the uh, contract, we anticipate that this process will probably start sometime in January. Uh, and uh, according to their timeline, it should take them three to four weeks to complete the actual inventory. And then they'll do another two to three weeks on the reconciliation of the of the information. Wow. A any questions on? Any... So two months to finish everything? Most Most wow. likely, yes. All right. Um, during the month of January, whenever they begin, is this going to interrupt any coursework for students, faculty? So, no. Uh, we actually work with them on providing schedules uh, of the of the classrooms so that they will not be interfering with any any event or or lectures that we may have. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Villa. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number six, approval of amendment to building lease agreement with Association of Logistics and Forwarding Agents, Inc., Alpha, Mr. Cesar Vela. Yes, uh, board members, uh, 
Alpha has uh, reached out to us uh, requesting that the agreement that was approved back in December 2022 uh, be amended to from a five year to a 10 year. Uh, they have made uh, an investment of uh, 66,237 to the interior of building P4. Uh, and in return, they would uh, wanna see if we could extend the agreement from a five year to a 10 year. Uh, currently, the agreement that was approved uh, is uh, for uh, 60 months with the option to renew for an additional uh, 60 months. Uh, the monthly rent is set at $500 a, a month. So if we were to do uh, 120 months, we would be looking at a total uh, contract amount of 126000 Now uh, It would be 60000 in rent and rent and 66000 in the investment that was made by Alpha. Uh, we do have a uh, 10-year agreements with the Imaginarium, as well as actually a 15-year agreement with DPS. And both these, uh, these agreements included a capital investment from those entities for the uh, repair and restoration of the interior of the buildings. Any, any questions on? Thank you, Mr. Villa. Thank you. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number seven, approval of emergency phone repairs at Laredo College Ford McIntosh campus. Mr. Albert Chavez. Thank you, Mr. Villa. Thank you. Good evening, members of the Finance and Audit Committee. Uh, Albert Chavez, Associate Vice President for Information Technology. For this item, uh, we're requesting board approval uh, for additional costs to the repairs for our campus emergency phones. Uh, we currently uh, are working with a vendor to repair all 19 phones on campus. As part of the original uh, purchase order, eight of them have already been repaired. And as in the process of repairing the phones, additional items were identified that need to be repaired. Uh, some of the items that have been identified that need to be repaired are some of the network switches inside the emergency phones. There are some transceiver, transceiver modules that need to be repaired. And also some of the uh, voice over IP phones that are built in um, that are originally were identified as working or are actually not working and need to be repaired. So for this particular item, the, the vendor is Computer Solutions uh, under a DIR contract, which is DIR uh, GBR 4359 gray bar uh, DIR TSO. 4359. Uh, the total cost for the additional components and the labor is 61549 And for the expense, uh, we have funds available in the IT department for uh, emergency phone repairs. And that's 61549 that's just the initial cost. It may go up in the event that they find anything else? No, is this, is, this is the uh, final cost. You could consider it a change order because we had already... Pay, okay. have an original PO mm -hmm. from the prior fiscal year. So as, as they've been doing the work, they identify these additional components need to be repaired. So at the Fort McIntosh campus, we have a total of 19 phones spread out throughout the campus. Actually, one can be seen uh, out the window here, right in front of the library. Uh, eight of them are already fully functional um, out of the 19. So we just need to continue repairing the rest so we can be 100% functional. And we are, we've been uh, working very closely with campus police and we have a schedule uh, that we're working on so we can uh, test the phones every, every month uh, and make sure that we keep up with the maintenance on the phones. Uh, just like anything, those phones, I mean, they have a compute technology inside of them. So we need to make sure that everything is functional. Um, and on a different note, we did acquire a piece of software from the manufacturer that uh, is going to monitor the, all the phones remotely. Police department will have it uh, on one of their screens in the dispatch center. And from there, they'll be able to see the status of all the, the phones. That was done through a, a different uh, purchase. The, the software cost us uh, under $2,000 and it's already being finalized. And that'll give us additional visibility into the status of the phones. Uh, chair recognizes Dr. Ramirez. Mr. Chavez, do we have a timeline for completion on the project? Did they tell you how long it was going to take them to get them all done? 
No, uh, because these items, uh, they've been working with the manufacturers to get the components as soon as possible. I can get the, a firm date, but as of right now, uh, we they don't, don't have, have a timeline a, for a you. Timeline maybe though. we can request one just okay. so that we have, so, and, and maybe we mark the ones that we know are working um, so that if they're not working, we put a sign on them so that the students, or if anybody needs to pick one up and it's not working, they're not fooled by the fact that it's there. And that's already been done. So okay. the, the phones that are not working do have a sign that they're out of service. When did this project start? It started early in the prior fiscal year. Any questions? Right. I've heard. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ramirez. All right, we'll move on to agenda item number eight, which is the approval of purchase of edit share storage appliance for Media Center. Mr. Albert Chavez. For this particular item, we're requesting approval for the purchase of an edit share storage appliance uh, to be used by the Media Center for video production. Uh, the recommended vendor is TM Television uh, using a buy board contract number 644-21. Uh, this appliance will allow uh, the Media Center Department to collaboratively work on video editing projects. It will also allow them um, to store videos on the appliance for archival purposes. Uh, the edit share appliance uh, includes a total of 256 terabytes of storage. Uh, the total cost for the appliance is 80413 with 50 cents, uh, and this will be purchased using the uh, equipment funds that were allocated for FY fiscal year uh, 24 um, that were assigned to the Media Center Department. What's the amount of that? Oh, uh, 80413 with 50 cents. Any questions? All right. Thank you, Mr. Chavez. Thank you. All right. We'll move on to uh, agenda item number nine, which is the approval of budgeted cash matching funds required for a grant application. Ms. Uh, Sandra Cortez. Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, it's Dr. Diana Ortiz. Ms. Cortez is out of town. Thank you. Hello. Good evening, members of the Finance and Audit Committee, Dr. Ramirez and colleagues. My name is Dr. Diana Ortiz, Vice President of Institutional Advancement. Today, I'm looking for, on behalf of uh, Sandra Cortez, the approval of budget cash matching funds required for this grant application. The Rio South Texas Education and Community Development Foundation um, in, has this application, and we are seeking matching uh, budgeted funds in the amount of $40,155 towards the purchase of training equipment for the Laredo College Continuing Education Workforce Skills Programs, student promotional items, sponsorships for two job fairs, and staff professional development. Rio South Texas Education and Community Development Foundation will contribute $132,515, of the grant total. This grant will be awarded in a two-year period. The Rio South Texas and Community Development Foundation, RSTF, is part of the Rio South Texas Alliance, a national regional economic development alliance established with partners of the South Texas Economic Progress, which is COSTEP. And you might be familiar because last year they did provide two grants in the amount of 62.5. So I, I believe that this is another opportunity for the Workforce Development Center. Along with the private um, business communities, we are leading economic and talent development efforts through the seven county Rio South Texas region, including Cameron, Hidalgo, Jim Hogg, Star, Webb, Willacy, and um, Zapata counties. So the Laredo College Workforce Development Center will apply for the Rio South Texas Education and Community Development Foundation grant in the amount of $132,515. The grant again, will provide workforce skills training for 84 students over the course of two years as well. And the request is for Laredo College to match 40,155 over the two year period. The budgetary uh, account would be 28,0001, The restricted scholarship account in the amount of 40,155. 
Any questions from members of the committee? Thank, Thank you. you, Director Ortiz. All right, it is 6.05 and we will adjourn. Thank you, everyone.